The Story of Hatshepsut In ancient times, kings of Egypt were called pharaohs. But the word pharaoh didn't always mean king. At first, it just meant big house or palace, because the pharaoh was the person who lived in the biggest house in Egypt, the royal palace. Pharaohs were considered much more than kings, however. The flooding of the Nile meant life or death to the Egyptians. And they thought the pharaoh had something to do with making the Nile overflow each spring. In fact, they believed that the pharaoh was not just a man. They thought he was also a god. Because he was such an important person, the ancient Egyptians had certain rules that told how a pharaoh should be chosen. And like so many other things the Egyptians did, whether it was the way they painted their pictures or dressed or prayed, once they decided how to do something, they didn't like to change the rules. But about 3,500 years ago, somebody changed the rules for them. And that person was a princess, Hatshepsut. Think of her name as Hat Shep Sut. She was the daughter of a pharaoh named Thutmose the first. Thutmose was already fairly old when he became pharaoh, and he wanted to do all he could for Egypt in the time he had left, so he worked extra hard. As he got older, he could not keep up with the pace. Luckily, his beloved daughter, Hepshepsut, said, I will help you run Egypt, father. Thank you, daughter, he replied. And he gave her more and more of his responsibilities to handle. Hatshepsut enjoyed this and did a fine job. But then sadly, Thutmose I grew ill and died. So the Egyptians needed a new pharaoh. You might think they would pick Hatshepsut since she already knew how to do the job. But the tradition said the pharaoh had to be male, not female. And we know how the Egyptians felt about changing rules. So Hatshepsut's cousin became pharaoh, Thutmose II. Then Thutmose II also died. And the royal courthouse chose Hatshepsut's young nephew to become Thutmose III. But Hatshepsut had had enough of doing all the work while someone else got to be pharaoh. She announced, I have decided to become co-ruler of Egypt with my nephew, Thutmose III. We will be pharaohs together. One of the wise old counselors hobbled forward and said, Excuse me, princess, but I'm sure you remember that the pharaoh has to be, uh, a man. For what she did next, some people have called her the first great woman in human history. Hatshepsut simply replied, That is no problem. I officially declare myself a man. So, Hatshepsut and Thutmose III were both called pharaoh but she ran the country. She directed builders and artists to put up pictures and statues of her dressed as a man and even wearing a beard. It was so hot in Egypt in those days before air conditioning that in order to stay cooler, Egyptians shaved their heads and the men wore no beards or mustaches. But pharaohs, wore skinny fake beards in order to look wise. Only now, it was a woman wearing the beard. Hatshepsut was an excellent pharaoh. She constructed one of the greatest temples to the Egyptian gods. And she built up trade between Egypt and some of her distant neighbors. Every time she did something good, her builders would carve advertisements into the walls of buildings describing the terrific job Hatshepsut was doing. After Hatshepsut's death, 
Thutmose decided to put up walls to cover up the images of Hatshepsut's accomplishments. He wanted people to forget about Hatshepsut. Thutmose also set out to conquer many other countries around Egypt, making Egypt and its people incredibly rich and powerful. Today, he is considered one of the greatest of all the ancient pharaohs. Thousands of years later, modern scientists took down the walls hiding the temple carvings. Not only had those walls hidden the carvings, they had actually kept harsh weather or other things from destroying Hatshepsut's image and the words she had chosen to tell about herself. Although he had wanted to make people forget, Thutmose had accidentally preserved the memory of Hatshepsut, the woman who made herself a pharaoh.